I thought I would try my hand at a great horned owl documentary. I filmed this great horn family a couple of springs and summers ago. These are the two owlets. The nest blew away weeks prior and they remained clinging to these branches every morning and evening I would visit them. Very well behaved and good little wild owlets. The great horned owl also known as the tiger owl or the hoot owl is a large owl native to the americas it is an extremely adaptable bird with a vast range and is the most widely distributed true owl in the americas it is the most common owl and seen throughout most of the continent with its long ear tufts which are also referred to as plumicorns. Their intimidating yellow-eyed stare and deep hooting voice, the great horned owl is the quintessential owl of storybooks. Back to plumicorns though, we all know unicorns are not real, but actual plumicorns are. So how cool is that? Like here you can see on the little babies, they have little tiny nubs for those ear tufts. But mom, wait till you see her, she has very large ear tufts. And those are referred to as legit plumicorns. When I found that little nugget of information out, I was just, that was the bee's knees to me. I couldn't stop saying the word plumicorns forever. Look at her. Look how stoic and proud she is. I actually filmed this um, on a, like this was 10, 20 feet from a very busy road. Um, I was actually across the road on a large median filming this and mom actually fed her little ones seagull for every meal it's a lot of work and you know I'll say trigger warning now you will see parts in this documentary of mom ripping apart seagull and feeding it to her babies so if you're not into that I suggest you stop or fast forward it when we get there but this is wildlife and it is such a pleasure to be able to observe it and edit it and score it and narrate it and here's takeoff. I really hope you enjoy it. This is what I call bloopers when I take um, photos or video. You don't always get the owl out in the open. And although a lot of people complain about that when they photograph or film it, I'm, I'm cool with that. Look at how well protected they are. All those branches thick and thin and those pine cones I mean they are very well concealed now mom flew in with this seagull you can see little feathers in her beak and around her eye it's a uh, it's a lot of work but that stare right I mean a lot of owls are cute but uh, the great horned owl especially the mom I would not want to get on her bad side, especially if I was alone at night walking throughout a forest um, during nesting season. They can be very aggressive. Now, I like to always show how far away I am. Legit, this is how far away I am when I am filming my owls. See the road there? Yeah, they're so pretty with that feather in front of her eye. Uh, I think it's very important. You might want to fast forward if you don't want to see her eat seagull. You don't see the head of the seagull or anything, but you know, wild animals have to eat. Um, this was near Gull Island in Ottawa, so there was a smorgasbord of gulls for her. They gotta do what they gotta do, you know, whether it's bugs or rodents or birds. Wildlife is very hard. They have it hard as it is. Okay. Color pattern. Let's talk about their color pattern. 
Great horned owls are molted gray-brown with reddish brown that bases and a neat white patch on their throat. Their overall color tone varies regionally from sooty to pale. They are nocturnal, and you're like, then how am I seeing them in the daylight, right? Well, if you can start looking for great horned owls end of November, December, during their mating ritual and courtship at dawn and dusk, if you can hear them, then the nest will be like within a three to five kilometer range. And you just wait it out for April, and that's when you'll get footage like this. They have no other option but to be out in the open and hunting and feeding the babies. You'll see them at dusk sitting on fence posts or tree limbs at the edges of open areas, flying across roads or fields with stiff, deep beats of their rounded wings. Their call is a deep, stuttering series of four to five hoots. I also want to mention, like, you can find great horned owls almost anywhere. I think they're the most adoptable owl. I know somewhere in the USA they were nesting in a Lowe's department store. L-O-W-E-S. Oh yeah. And I think it was somewhere near Arizona or Florida they were nesting um, at the top of a library. They also nest on people's balconies in their planters. I mean, they remind me a lot of cats. Look at little, little, little one there, exercising those wings, branching and building that muscle mass. We got the uh, baby on the right with part of a seagull picking at it and mom just staring. See, that's why it's so important to keep your distance because she knows I'm there. I'm like really far away when you see me zoom out, but uh, they know and you don't want to do anything to cause them to flush or freak out, right? If you love something, you respect it. But yes, they, they remind me so much of cats. Uh, if they fit, they sit, just like cats in boxes. Great horned owls will legit nest anywhere. Gotta make them babies. Um, and they're phenomenal parents. <laughs> I just find it so adorable watching the little one carefully make his way to mom. I love watching the babies discovering what it's like to be a baby owl. Preening, their talons, their feet, balance, coordination. So <laughs> look at how cute he is. Absolutely adorable. And, you know, for me, oh, that split second when they look right into your soul, it's almost like God is speaking to me through their eyes. Oh, lost his balance there. I could just watch them for hours. I don't need them to do anything other than be. You know, check out that freaking head bob. How awesome is that? That's how they, <laughs> how they gauge distance and triangulate prey and distance. I mean, they're just so cute and utterly fascinating. I mean, 48 years old, I've been doing this for 11 years and it still blows my mind that you can walk into a park or a hiking trail or a forest and see owls for free. They just hang out there and live in trees or on trees and wow, like seriously wow. Look at those little nubby plumicorns up top there. Downy feathered ear tufts. Just amazing. And you see them in the daytime, right? And they're all sleeping and snuggly and, you know, not <laughs> big yawn, big yawn. Um, always watch when they do that because sometimes that means a pellet's coming up. So get your camera shutter ready to, to click that. 
Yeah, owls remind me so much of cats. I mean, cats and owls sleep so much in the day. They're nocturnal. They spend a lot of time preening and cats looking there for grooming. Cats cough up hairballs. Owls cough up pellets or regurgitate pellets. And uh, the great horned owl, like from a distance, silhouetted, it looks like a cat in a tree because of those ear tufts. Mind-blowing to me. Okay, so I'll get back to some facts about these beautiful creatures. Those little side head bobs are really cute. <laughs> Even not straight on eyes staring back into ours. I just love watching the head movements. Just observing, really. I mean, what a blessing to be able to watch these mystical creatures. Okay, great horned owls, they're almighty and powerful. They can take down birds and mammals larger than themselves. But did you know they can also dine on smaller cuisine, such as mice, frogs, and even scorpions? A great horned owl is powerful enough to take prey two to three times heavier than itself. That's like really impressive. Their pellets are very large, about seven and a half to 10 centimeters long and almost four centimeters thick. Pellets are dark grayish black and compact. Skulls as wide as three centimeters are regurgitated whole. Pellets are regurgitated six to 10 hours after eating. Now, see how he got a little thin there, the baby? Um, not as thin as I've seen adults get, but um, usually when people walk their dogs, and that's what was happening here. Um, there was a trail, and someone was walking their dog, and got a, you know, baby? Baby owl doesn't know what a dog is. His nest blew away, and he's clinging on those branches for weeks for dear life, waiting for mom to serve him breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, so he's really fixated and focused on that right now. Some cool facts about great horned owls. When clenched, a great horned owl's strong talons require a force of 28 pounds to open. The owl uses this deadly grip to sever the spine of their large prey. Even though the female great horned owl is larger than her mate, the male has a larger voice box and a deeper voice. Pairs often call together with audible differences in pitch. I can't get over these little cuties. I like how one eye blinks, one eye's open. Sometimes they blink at the same time, same time and sometimes they don't. Oh, did you know they have three eyelids? You see that bottom one close there? The bottom lid is for sleeping. The top lid is for blinking. And the third lid goes diagonally across their eye and it's translucent. It's called the nictitating membrane. I mean, I am a sucker for anything owl. And the more knowledge I find, the more I will share. And I just thought that's pretty cool. Three freaking eyelids. I mean, you can't say that every day. Everything about an owl is pretty cool, though. You can't go wrong with owls. Great horned owls are fierce predators that can take large prey, including raptors such as osprey, peregrine falcons and other owls that part makes me real sad i mean as a whole the owl species to me are the almighty like you, you can't get better than an owl it makes me very sad that they eat their own kind great horned owls have large eyes pupils that open widely in the dark and retinas containing many rod cells for excellent night vision. 
Their eyes don't move in their sockets, but they can swivel their heads more than 180 degrees to look in any direction. They also have sensitive hearing, thanks in part to facial disc feathers that direct sound waves to their ears. Look at, there he is gazing into your soul again. How does it feel? Let me know in the comments, what does it feel like? See, <laughs> he blinked his left eye by itself. There we go again. What does it feel like when they look into your soul? Do you feel like they can tell all your secrets? I do. It's like they know that you know that they know. If you know what I mean. Now, I'm in Ontario, Canada. Nesting season is in January or February when the male and the females hoot to each other. When close, they bow to each other with drooped wings. Mutual beak rubbing and preening also occurs. They do not build a nest of their own, but they utilize the nests of other birds, such as the hawk, crow, or heron. They may also use squirrel nests, hollows in trees, rocky caves, clumps of witch's broom, abandoned buildings, barns, or artificial platforms. I'm going to do a zoom out again just to show you. See, you do not have to get right up there in order to get a good shot. Nikon P1000. It's only $1,000. And uh, professional gear, you start off at five grand. You can't get this close. This is the most ethical wildlife ca camera for photography and videography. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time, and this is my go-to. I wish Nikon would sponsor me for their P1000, but like seriously, you've seen the clarity, right? This shoots in 4K. You don't have to disrupt or spook or anything. Like The camera speaks for itself, and if you're ethical with wildlife, you can stand behind everybody else, all the other photographers, and still get just as good shots if not better, in my opinion. Great horned owls are extremely aggressive when defending the nest and will continue to attack until the intruder is killed or driven off. Normally, two to four eggs are laid and incubated by the female for 26 to 35 days. Look at this, this is one of my favorite parts. Mom and baby out in the open, the sun is setting, and she's feeding him little bits of seagull. Now, if she was feeding him uh, rodent, it, he could swallow it in one gulp. So these tiny little morsels that mom's feeding him, um, I find it really funny because we all know baby and mom that he can eat better. But, you know, this is a teaching process. You know, baby's cute, and right now it's it's good time with mom. It's, oh, look at the little head, Bob. He's so cute. I wonder if he looks at mom and says, you know what? I wonder if I'll grow up to be as beautiful as you. You gotta wonder. Or maybe they just really like the bonding time with mom, and mom likes it too. That's why the pieces are so small. I mean, you can research for a book. You can research in books, or you can work in wildlife rehab, or you can watch them in the wild like me, and everyone can compile different data. You know what I mean? No one's 100% right about anything. If we collectively work together and share things like this that we see, knowledge is power helps us to better understand these beautiful creatures. There's a part coming up that is the most adorable thing in the world. I want you to really watch. Baby gets fixated on one of those pine cones. And I tell you, look at, look at mom more, please. Mom, I'm hungry. Yeah, here we go, look. Mom's beak is full of feathers. Look at baby looking at that pine cone. 
he's fixated more than the food. He's like, what is that? It's so cute. He's just like a little toddler. It's shiny. It's like a little toy, like a rattle, right? But all of these things help him learn how to be a powerful owl like mom eventually. I just thought that was the bee's knees. <laughs> how cute can you be? I would love to know what they're thinking and feeling in these moments. There he goes again with that pine cone. Baby steps as a baby. <laughs> he almost lost his balance there too. You know, but if he breaks that pine cone off, you know, he's learning how to become an owl, how to break things and rip at things just like mom's doing with the seagull, you know? I've never seen a mother owl work so hard to feed her young. That's a lot of feathers to pluck to get food for the baby. Um, I talked with several of the people uh, where mama would roost on their ceiling and hunt and they said the top of their building looked like a mattress factory had exploded. Yep. Yeah. I just think she's adorable with those feathers. I know it's sad to see other animals perish, but, you know, they have to survive. It's not every day you get to see mama and baby with their beaks full of feathers. See? Monkey see, monkey do. Not that they're monkeys, but mama's ripping at it. I'm, I'm going to get some feathers too. And then when she takes, takes them away from the nesting area, that's when I leave them alone. Um, that's a thing of respect, uh, my beliefs anyways, um, you know, they have to learn how to hunt, they have to learn how to fly and, and do everything within a matter of like six months because then they have to leave. The parents stay and the babies leave, so it's a really paramount time for mom and dad to do all of those teachings. And I tell you, you got to be so super careful because we don't know where the owls are a lot of the time because of their camouflage, right? Even when I knew where they were, trying to find them sometimes is really hard because they move around in the night. But you got to be so careful because if you even accidentally spook one and it flies from its roost, this is right by a road if you know there's oncoming traffic you got to be super careful to maintain that respect because accidents happen you know at all times put the animal the owl first I love watching mom navigate here with it gripped in her talons and baby just watching her every move these are the things that make my heart go pitter-patter. And baby doing his little beak smacks there, it's just like us moistening our lips. Oh, he almost lost his balance again. And there's mom with that great horned owl stare, like, do you mind? See, baby's got a feather in his talon. <laughs> Okay, mom's due to fly off at any moment now. And baby is just happy observing things. Feathers, bugs, ants, pine cones. I love looking at them, even from behind, they're fascinating. Baby on the left, mom on the right, and check out her plumicorns. Those ear tufts are just gorgeous. And baby owls, I always joke around that they remind me of a mullet. They're all baby downy feathers in the front and they're <laughs> mostly adult feathers in the back. Mm. What a blessing 
this is my happy place. This is where I feel the most at peace, the most alive, and like the happiest woman on this earth. What a lot of you don't know is I have late stage Lyme disease. I went four years misdiagnosed, had brain scans, and seen over a hundred doctors. I was getting treatment in the USA from 2012 to, well, before the pandemic started, but then my Lyme disease doctor retired. So it's been three years almost with no treatment. And the rare occasion I get to spend time with owls, my pain goes away temporarily. I have fibromyalgia and three other autoimmune diseases and some things are even worse. But to have this amount of gratitude and just awe-inspiring wow when I am watching these creatures, like it's all worth it. I'm getting teary-eyed just thinking about it. I mean, how children wait for Santa each year, that's how I am with owls. Now, I unfortunately um, look for owls alone. I've been bullied a lot and shamed. Uh, I am a disabled person physically. Um, it's a lot of hard work. So if you ever meet me out there one day and I'm smiling and filming an owl, that's the face I put on. But the face you don't see is the next two to four days I'm completely bedbound and I'm in so much pain I legit can't even move or take a shower. Isn't it interesting the faces we put on when we are out in public to make other people comfortable? So here they are again. <laughs> They're side by side, if uh, memory serves me correct. Look at those leggies. Now, in the day, you'll see them all tired like cats and sleeping, but this is like 30 to 40 minutes before the sun goes down. My camera makes it look a lot brighter than it actually is. And uh, this is what I call shenanigans. <laughs> Baby owl shenanigans. They get up to a lot of mischief. Just you know how sassy cats do when they knock things off the table? looking at you that's how these baby owls they remind me of the sassy cats they get all that energy or what they refer to as in cats as the zoomies um yeah these owls you think oh they're baby owls how much longer until they can fly wait till that sun goes down 30 minutes and oh my god they do aerial acrobatics i kid you not they're meeping and doing their begging call for food. They're flying from treetop to treetop. It's like a Cirque du Soleil with baby owls. It is just freaking awesome. I have some nighttime footage I will post after this. Here's little cutie. It's a very windy day and I'm just in heaven. Little head bob here and there. And if you look at his little face, he looks like he's wearing a mask. Exercising those wings, he's really good at gripping into that tree. Look at that floof. Well, see what I mean? Downy feathers in the front, full on adult feathers in the back, like a mullet. Short on the top, long in the back. Back to the, um, I'm gonna get back to the, um, knowledge I wanted to share with you. So, normally mama lays two to four eggs and they're incubated by mom for around a month or a couple days extra. And the young start roaming from the nest to nearby branches at six to seven weeks. And they don't fly really well until they're about 10 weeks old. They're fed for another few weeks and then they are slowly weaned. 
Families remain loosely associated during summer before young disperse in the autumn. So you got to think the babies in April, May, June, July, August, September, up to, like I said, six months. Adults tend to remain near their breeding areas year-round, while juveniles disperse widely over 250 kilometers in the autumn. Now here we have them side by side, about 40 minutes before the sun goes down. They get so alive. Look at the head bobbing on the right. Oh, my jaw hurt from smiling. Oh, that came from the cloaca. It's like a, that's where they, it's an all-in-one. So urinate and pooping and procreating all from the same spot. I don't have any problems watching an owl poop. I think it's awesome. Anything I can learn about them and share with you, I will. See, they want to jump and they want to fly, and that's what all that head bobbing going on is about. Who's going to do it first? The little owl on the left or the right? See if you guess right. I forget which one makes the first move. They've got gumption, though. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I love how floofy they are. Mom has been feeding them well. Very well. It's almost like the one on the right is like, yep, I got a better vantage point up here, little bro, little sis. Yep, this spot is the best spot. Little bro, little sis is like, no, I want up there too. I want to see what you're seeing. Smacks him accidentally in his head with his wing. Oh, look at that. Look at king of his castle you gotta feel that it's a social status the higher you are on a perch i've seen it before with snowy owls believe me adult snowy owls uh, aerial acrobatics for the tallest perch i really think it's a sign of status but here you're gonna see him fly to another tree which is hard to capture these things. <laughs> He's just so adorable. See, my master plan all along, everyone, is it isn't for me. I have never once put out a video thinking, oh, I hope it goes viral. Oh, here we go. I slowed it down a little bit. He flew. My plan is education. My plan is to make you fall in love with owls, but not just fall in love with them. I want you to respect them. I want you to love them so much and pay attention to all the little details. I want you to really notice when I zoom out. Here we go again. Look at those talons, right? That's impressive. Almost reminds me of a tarantula. So I want you to fall in love with owls so much in an ethical way. So you can always see me zoom out in the videos. It shows you you do not need to be up close. You know, I don't drink, smoke, buy Starbucks, or eat any takeout. My camera was gifted for me, to me. You don't need a lot of money. It's the person behind the camera, right? So if you're out in nature and you see people too close or bringing ladders up to the roosting hole or throwing things at the owl or shaking the tree, which is highly unethical, um, speak up. Speak up on behalf of the owl. That is my plan. That is the deepest wish inside my heart, is to raise awareness. Oh, I think he did a pellet there. That's my wish. I want them safe, protected, happy, healthy. You know why you can't find owls? It's not just because of their camouflage. They don't want us to find them, right? They've spent 
their entire lives hiding and for good reason owls eat other owls and there are so many stories I can show and tell you where I have seen mama great horned owl purposefully put herself out in the open so a mob of crows could attack her so they wouldn't find her babies. I have seen it so many times. And then when you look at the bottom of the tree, mom put herself in harm's way on purpose, you'll see a whole bunch of bloody feathers that the crows picked out of her. I mean, I don't like hearing this, oh, well, I took the picture. If she didn't like it, she would have fly, she'd fly away. Um, no. It's a roosting spot. It's a secret spot. It's a spot her predators don't know about. It's a spot where she or he feels safe until the sun goes down, where they can go undetected. It is of paramount importance that you keep your distance. If you love something, you respect it. I challenge everybody out there to do this. They have it hard enough as it is. You know, when it gets to the point where you're nesting in a hardware store and on top of a library and in people's planters, it shows you that, you know, they're in our city. We've taken away so much of their habitat they don't have any other options. Technically, they were here first, so please let's show them the love and respect that they truly deserve. So earlier on, when I spoke of the top of the building looking like a factory of mattresses have exploded. This is what I mean. This is where Mama did most of her hunting and gathering of prey. And I have a little more tidbits to share after I upload. I guess you can call this a documentary. This is the same family that I would wake up at 5 a.m. and drive to every day during the pandemic. My beliefs also are not to post in real time. I don't believe in posting owl videos or photos as they're happening. Uh, what that does is draws more attention, more stress, more insanity to the owls. Raising babies is very hard, especially if something happens to dad or mom gets injured, whatever, even if it doesn't happen, you know. The worst thing you can do is post where you took the photo or the video of the owl. Just wait a month. You don't need the clout that bad. That might sound kind of cranky or bossy, but again, do it to protect the owl. If it's a well-known place and people can find out where it is, believe me, people can study the feather patterns on the owl and, and know where you did it. Like, I'm not joking. People did that to me when I first started out. When I didn't even say where I, I filmed or photographed it, they study the feathers. So you need to be really careful because what happens is it starts drawing a crowd. That goes for the people who post on eBird. It goes for the people who post on Facebook and all the socials. It goes for even the journalists that come to do a story on it. You're giving the location away too. So what you're doing is you're actually inviting hundreds of people to come and see. I mean, you can't blame the people, right? Who doesn't want to see an owl and baby owls? That's awesome. But if you truly love the owl and you, you really want them to remain safe, don't post the location. Don't post nesting owls when they're nesting. Everyone can find it out. If you're upset by all of the people on your property or in your park, maybe don't post it publicly. Just saying, I have a friend who did that 
and they just can't believe all the the disrespectful photographers they said that showed up well don't post it it's that simple you know wait till they've flood the area and then do it for their safety put the animal first here this little darling went to meet mama on the rooftop oh my god and he fell straight down he he just couldn't make it and mom and the brother were on the top of the building squawking at him hooting it's okay little buddy you can do it come up here and um, he just couldn't but it was really freaking cute he just did a little poop usually when they poop they fly true story they lighten the load I think that's the case for all birds I don't know about you, but I could just watch them forever. It really doesn't matter to me what they do. I wish there was a little teleprompter going on so I could read all of their thoughts. And again, right into the soul when they peer into your soul for that brief moment. It is the most magical feeling I have ever felt. I love the full frontal eye level. You can tell he really wants to take off. Here we go. Oh, you can do it. You can do it, little buddy. <laughs> He's so adorable. Back to the breeding, territories are maintained by the same pair of owls for as many as eight consecutive years. However, these owls are solitary in nature, only staying with their mate during the nesting season. Average home ranges in various studies have been shown to be approximately two and a half kilometers. So, maybe a mile and a half and there there he took off I forget if this is very early one morning or very late in one evening it is just so magical watching them in the treetops I do a lot of shorter cuter owl video clips on TikTok. The Owl Queen, T-H-E-E-O-W-L-Q-U-E-E-N. I'm on Instagram as well, but there is an underscore between the and owl and queen. Oh, see, this is the nighttime shenanigans. It was so windy. Mom and baby together. <laughs> he can barely hold on. Mom's used to, you know, treacherous weather conditions. So wind is nothing for mom. But, but baby, he's probably freaking out, thinking, holy cow, mom, this is intense. Really? How am I going to fly in this? And her just lifting off caused his wings to flight to maintain balance. Did you see that? I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope someday that our paths will meet up and perhaps we will be filming or photographing an owl family together. Please keep their location secret. Please keep your distance. They work so hard, mom does especially to keep them safe and teach them. Please spread awareness and education and be their advocate. Some people honestly don't know that they are doing more harm than good because when they see an owl for the first few times, the endorphins kick in, right? So let's not shame them. On social media, not everybody knows. Okay, just have a calm conversation in an adult manner. And you know, by speaking with kindness, 
that can totally change someone's behavior from bad to good. I wish you all happiness and health. And I'd love to know your favorite parts of this. Take care. Be kind. Be well.